All right, let's do this. <clears throat> Coffee. I'm a Hilu. I'm a Hilu. From the 403 to the H H A Z, something like that. Mr. Nelson here. Ah, uh, how are you? Quarantine going well? I hate coronavirus. That's all I can say. Um, but productive. Uh, in any case, in the last video, we're, we're introducing logarithms right now, and we're just trying to understand how they work. Like, not, not how they work, but just how we can manipulate the actual equations. So in the last video, which is kind of part one, this is like part two, we know that when we're dealing with exponential functions, this was our equation, where c is a constant, it can be any number, and what makes it an exponential equation is that x is our exponent, it's our variable. And, you know, a, a general kind of graph because it will change depending on how big C is, but generally it's going to look something like this, right? That's our exponential. This is our y is equal to C to the x. And we know now that when we take the inverse of an exponential function, it actually reflects across y is equal to x. And that inverse is actually our logarithmic function and it will end up looking something like this where this is y is equal to log base c of x okay this is our logarithmic function this is our exponential function now how do we get there well i'm going to move this over slightly so we can keep that up there so we know that we had y is equal to c to the x and if we take the inverse of this function, we recall that when we take the inverse of a function, we replace y with x and x with y. So when we do that, what we get is x is equal to c to the y. And then some really smart mathematicians found a way to write that in a y equals form, and when we do that, we get y equals log base c of x, okay? And these two relationships here are kind of our golden, this is like our golden relationship for just understanding and, and converting um, between logarithms and exponents. Okay, the magic equation here. And in our last equation, our last video, kind of part one, we learned that we can just, we can evaluate what a log is using this relationship. So say for example, they said, um, I have log base five, 25 is equal to two. Okay, wait, that's wrong, is equal to question mark. Okay, they say, what is this equal to? Evaluate. And what I can do is I can look at here and be like, okay, well, I know that C is gonna be five, X is gonna be 25, and Y is what I'm trying to figure out. It's the value of that. So I can use that and jump into here, and I can say, okay, well, 25, which is X, is equal to my base five to some power. And now, this is kind of like solving an exponential equation where I have to get the same base. So I know that 25 is the same as five squared, five to the five, and then I recall that c to the x equals c to the y, just means that x is equal to y. This is like a, a, a law of exponents. So in this case, I can ignore the fives now and say that two is equal to y, or y is equal to two, Therefore, log base 5 of 25 is equal to 2. That's how I solve logarithms or, or evaluate them. Okay, and it's, it's, uh, you know, it's fairly straightforward as long as I'm just jumping between this relationship. Now, one thing I want to mention, which is important to know, is that generally speaking, if I don't have a base, so if they say just log of 100, for example, if there's no base, you assume it's a base 10, okay? So I can rewrite this. If they don't write the base, it's base 10 always, okay? Because we live in a base 10 world. Well, we don't live in a base 10 world, but we 
approach our world from a base 10 perspective. Okay, so just a little thing to know, okay? If they don't give the base, you assume it's a base 10. Okay, good, glad we had this talk. So, evaluating logs is not the only thing we can do here. What if they give us something like um, log base 5x is equal to negative 3. Now, we're actually trying to solve for x, not for y. We're not trying to evaluate this. We're trying to solve for x. So how do we do that? Exactly the same way. We just use our golden relationship here. So I'm in this form, and I'm going to try and get into this form to solve for x. So I know that x is equal to my base 5 to the power of y, which is negative 3. Now, from my exponent laws, I know that 5 to the negative 3, I can rewrite as 1 over 5 to the positive 3. So if I do that, I can rewrite this as x is equal to 1 over 5 cubed. And I can leave it like that, or I can know that 5 cubed is 1 over 125. And that's what x is equal to. So I could rewrite this if I wanted to. I could say, okay, log base 5 of 1 over 125 is equal to negative 3. Whoops. So, we know how to solve for y. We're, we now know how to solve for x. So the only other thing that we might ever have to solve for is our base. Okay, so we'll do one more solving for x here, and then we'll do one for solving the base. I'm hoping you're seeing that this is, once you kind of get comfortable and just see that you jump between these, it's fairly straightforward. So, <clears throat> I mean, these are straight from the textbook, but it's good to know. So we have log base x 36 is equal to 2. Okay, I'm solving for x. So I'm in this form. I'm going to get to this form to solve for x. x, whoops. Now, we have to be careful because they've written x as my base. That's my unknown. So it's not actually x, right? This x is an unknown. I could rewrite it as c to make it easier. So I'm going to write it as c, log base c. They write it as x in the textbook, but you'd have to know that it's not this x. It's actually this. It's just a variable. So I'm going to write it as x, but we're going to work with it. So 36 is my x. So I'm going to put that over here. 36 is equal to... Uh, so my base, C, my base is X here. So it's going to be X to the power of Y, which is 2. Okay? So 36 is equal to X squared. And I know that 6 squared, 36 is equal to X squared. What squared gives 36? 36 is equal to 6 squared. Therefore, X is equal to 30. Six. So I actually just did one with this. So now I'm going to do another one where we solve for x and another one where we solve for that. So we've, we've kind of seen everything we can solve for now. I accidentally just jumped in here. So in this case, my base, I could rewrite this now as log base 6 of 36 is equal to 2. Okay? A couple more. my variable, my, my constant base of 9 is equal to 1 half. So I'm solving for x, which is actually my constant there. So I'm just going to jump into this form. x is 9. So 9 is equal to my constant, which is x, to the power of 1 half. Okay. The square root, so basically I'm saying the square root of x is equal to 9. x to the 1 half is the same as the square root of x. What? Well, and then I can solve for x. So 
If I square this side, I'll square this side, this will cancel with this, and I'll get x is equal to 81. 9 squared is 81, which means that I can rewrite this as log base 81 of 9 is equal to 1 half. And then when I write this in, I get 9 to the, uh, sorry, I get 81 to the 1 half is equal to 9. Okay? That, that, that's really all we have to know about manipulating logarithms. We're just playing in here. Now, <clears throat> just one kind of extra example here, something we haven't seen before. So what if I have something like, they tell me to evaluate this. I get log base 2 of log base 3 of log base 4 of 64. They say evaluate, aka figure out what this equals to. Well, I'm going to apply bed mass to this one. To, to figure it out. So I'm actually going to start in my smallest, in my uh, innermost bracket here, okay? Because basically I'm saying here, log base 2, and this is my entire x, is equal to y. And here I'm saying log base 3 of this x is equal to there. And then here, log base 4. So if I can figure out what this is, this I can replace, if I can solve this, this will become my x for this. If I can solve this, this will become my x for this. So I hope I'm not being confusing, but let's do it. So let's start with in here, okay? And it's just going to be the same thing we've done when we were solving these basic ones. So I got log base 4 of 64 is equal to something, okay? And we're going to call that, we're going to call that, it's going to be equal to x because that's what's going to live there. It is, it would be y normally, but we're going to, we're going to call it x because that's going to be log base 3 of x. So. Uh, I know that if I go from here to here, four, uh, x, uh, 64, 64 is equal to, is equal to my base 4 to the power of y. 64 is the same as 4 cubed is equal to 4 to the y. Using my exponent laws with the same base, I know that 3 is equal to y, because I can ignore those. So, there we go. I figured out that this I can replace with 3. So now I can rewrite my equation, and I'll do it here in blue, in black. So I get now log base 2 of log base 3 of, this is all 3. There we go. Is equal to what? So now I can do this portion. What is log base 3 of 3 equal to? Well, I'm going to go back up here. So my base is 3, my x is 3. So I get 3 is equal to 3 to the y. Now, 3 to what power gives me 3? Well, 3 to the 1 gives me 3. So y, in this case, is equal to 1, which means I can replace this all with 1. And I'll rewrite it one more time. And I can, now I can solve it. So I get log base 2 of 1, because I'm replacing this all with 1, is equal to 1. And now I can solve this. So. Two, so I know that 1, my x, 1, 1, is equal to my base, which is 2, to some power. 2 to what power will give 1? Well, anything to the power of 0 gives 1. So therefore, 1 is the same as 2 to the power of 0. So y, or sorry, 2 to the power of 0 will be the same as 2 to the y. And then y is equal to 0. So this whole equation, in the end, is equal to 0. OK? 
Okay, so these are just nested logarithms. And we just, we use bed mass. We just start in the inside bracket and work our way out. We don't get intimidated. We just, we use what we know and we apply it. So this is really playing around, moving between logarithmic form, inverse, ex exponential form. And this is kind of a building block now to be able to move forward and start to transform logarithms using the transformations we've worked because just like radicals, just like exponent, exponent functions, just like um, uh, quadratic functions, we can uh, transform logarithmic functions in the exact same way, just slightly different. We're going to be using A, B, H, and K. So that's that. We'll carry on in the next video.